Good afternoon. Seniors, you're here. Give yourselves a hand. <laughs> well, my name is Janine Steer, Reverend Janine Steer, and I'm a coordinator in the Office of Mission and Ministry. I actually led the first year, retreat, first year retreat with some of these yahoos that are sitting here right now. And I'm going to invite us to worship this day. Today is a gift from God. We're gathered on the edge of a milestone, and we offer to God what we have to give, ourselves, and the stirrings of our hearts, the fears that we may have, the inklings that are in our minds. So let us bless God this day. For the graduates, today and this weekend is strange. It's surreal. It's like a high peak where you can look back over the way you've come and ahead to where you have not been. It's exciting, it's scary, it's unknown. So let us lean in to God. For parents and families, where did the time go? Suddenly babies have become young men and women. They're advocates and explorers, they're adventurers. We thought we were teaching them, and now they are teaching us. So let us trust God. For staff and faculty, we did our job. Challenging, encouraging, risking our passion and hope that they would not only turn the tassel, but believe in themselves as gifted, lovable people who will do justice and love mercy and walk kindly all the days of their lives. So let us thank the Lord. And blessed be the Lord. How good it is, Holy Spirit, to share this moment on tiptoe expectancy, grateful, alive, feeling whole, and entering into the rest of our lives. We thank you for this milestone. So come, let us worship our God. Our presider this afternoon is Father Tom Lamana of the Society of Jesus, pastor of St. Aloysius and rector of the Della Strada Jesuit community. Our homilist this afternoon is Father John Murphy of the Society of Jesus, director of spiritual formation at Bishop White Seminary here at GU. So now I invite you all to please rise. I invite you to look around this space and now, greet and introduce yourselves by name to those around you. And please now, I invite you with me to take a moment of silence to kind of name quietly for yourself where you are, what you bring to this space.
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Sisters and brothers, it is with great joy that we come together this afternoon to come together with the class of 2022, to come together as a Gonzaga community of families and friends rooted and grounded in the love of God. It's with great joy that we continue in this Easter season to ask that the Lord remind us of our baptisms, help us to live with more integrity our faith. In, t in today's gospel, we encounter Christ the Good Shepherd. May this water remind us whose we are. Almighty Lord and God, you are the source and origin of all life. Whether a body or soul, we ask you to bless this water, which we use in confidence to ask your forgiveness and to obtain your protection, the protection of your grace. Grant, O oh Lord, in your mercy that living waters may always spring up for our salvation, and so may we approach you with a pure heart and avoid all sin. We pray through Christ our Lord. Cleanse us of our sins, and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave good shepherd has gone before who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and took their seats. Many Jews and worshipers who were converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them and urged them to remain faithful to the grace of God. On the following Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, it was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first, but since you reject it and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have made you a light to the Gentiles that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe. And the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshipers and the leading men of the city stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, had a vision of great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Then one of the elders said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they stand before God's throne and worship him day and night in his temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or thirst anymore, nor will the sun or any heat strike them. For the lamb who is in the center of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to springs of life-giving water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them from my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. We are here this afternoon because God exists. For some of us, that is simply a word, a word that has contents but no revelation, just God. For others, it is a word that invites skepticism, doubt, 
perhaps even hostility, in some cases rage, deep resentment. For others, it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For others, it is the great Allah, may his name be praised. And for us who are Christians, it is the God of Jesus Christ, Son of God, Son of Man. And there are others who believe in God who has a different kind of name, whether the person be Hindu, Buddhist, or Jain. Because each of us has some sense of the transcendent. And it is indeed the transcendent reality of our own human nature that binds us together. Because our faith is at once unique and communal. And this afternoon, the faith that we have is expressed in the possibility of young men and women whose lives will be spent not in the service of an ego that wishes to destroy or to find joy in a success that is measured by the oppression of others, but rather by a self who finds purpose in love, service, kindness, compassion, tenderness, forgiveness, and above all, to be messengers, ministers, really, of hope. And so whatever it is, whatever and whoever it is that the word God conjures up in you, how welcome all of you are. Because this day of celebration is not a vain celebration, that is to say a one that is concocted solely by the machinations of one's imagination, but it is a celebration of life that treasures it in its capacity to be received. For what we do in honoring these young people is to receive them and the history that they give us, the history of their being a gift that binds us together. It also binds us together no matter what faith moment we experience. For the human being who does not believe in giftedness has sabotaged and destroyed his, her humanity. This afternoon we listened to three readings which at the outset seemed to be a bit discordant or at least at odds with one another not to mention the place in terms of a college education. How does one put all that together? Well, I'll try. First, there is a promise. And the promise is what Jesus says in this brief but quite beautiful gospel. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Notice, gift, commitment, and promise. I give them eternal life. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish, promise. The child is the gift, that small baby. The reality of it is to receive it, the child. Not to accept it, but receive it completely. And then the promise of fidelity that you have, but also you, our faculty have. For your own being here, the robes you wear, the excellent discourse which you engage in is the fulfillment of a promise, both to the universities from which you graduate, the disciplines which you represent, but also the reality of your place here as professors who speak the truth. It's a promise which was made and which is given and it is received. And so when Jesus gives us the paradigm, and it's an extraordinary paradigm, I give them life and it will last. That's the first element of an education. It is the good shepherd who says, I know my own. I know my own and I give myself to them. And when I give myself to them, they shall never perish. 
Indeed, one hopes that what you have received here will never perish. It will be reformed or recast or re-understood or reappropriated or reinterpreted or reapproached. All of that as your lives lead you into the multiplicities of possibility that this place hopefully has shown you as possible. And so the first promises you that trust is possible. And so the first element you bring with you as you leave is the statement of whom you, of those persons in whom you trust. Name them to yourself today. Whom do you trust? Who gives you life? Who promises you hope? A hope that will never last, never end. And the second, therefore, is a bond and pledge of fidelity, the second moment of education. And this is given to us in this reading, the second reading, which is a statement from the book of Revelation. I, the Lamb, will shepherd them. I will lead them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eye. This is what I shall do. This is what they will receive. This is who they will become. And the promise I make is that the suffering of time will be relieved by the tender compassion of a God who wipes away our tears by an eternal prom prom promise and presence that says, I am yours. So the second level, the second nature of a promise is to make something not which is a what but a who. I promise you myself. And when I give you myself, you will be different, I will be different, and we will be bound together. And God says it will be for eternity. Be sure that those to whom you entrust yourself have the capacity to accompany you on this journey to eternity, this desire to receive and to achieve and to express the transcendent. And finally, there is this invitation to obedience. How strange that is to say, that a degree from a liberal arts college, university, is really an invitation to obedience. Not an obedience which is a servile destruction of the other. Not an obedience which demands a bending of the knee and a bowing of the head and the, and the slicing of an, of an ax. It is an obedience that ennobles and brings to possibility and to hope and beauty. It is an obedience which Jesus gives absolute witness to in his life. When he is obedient unto the death, unto the death, even death on the cross, here in this place, which is extraordinary history of athletic prowess and excellence, we are reminded that true life is given to us by that icon way up there that never leaves the hall. The icon that says, this is life. The crucifix, this is life. Because it's my life, God says in Jesus. And it will be yours forever. In the obedience, therefore, it is not so much to an idea. It is to the truth of God's being. For however one imagines God, this is a personal reality. God is. And that being that reality demands obedience. And the great irony of that is in the obedience there is great freedom. A liberal arts university comes from the Latin word liber, which means book. 
And the idea of a book or an education or reading or exposure to truth is meant to liberate the one. And the purpose of the liberation is not the self, but it is to realize the capacity to make choice after choice after choice, which itself liberates the self, but in the context of our humanity, invites the world to come to a freedom that is found in the deep human nobility that is given in each human being. For that you are free, and to that you are entrusted with a humanity that obeys the needs of one's brothers and sisters. For in this desire for the transcendent, nothing will satisfy it but love. And it is a love that is received, that is pledged, that is promised, that is delivered, and that gives itself for the entirety of your being. Therein is indicated the level of obedience. I will only obey that which gives me freedom. I will receive the, and I will express the trust between human persons is possible. And I will, however, measure the trust that I give in the capacity of the other to ennoble me. And I will be faithful. I will be faithful to what I have promised. I will be faithful to my belief in that transcendent reality. And I will obey the needs of others. I will find in the needs of others the obedience of my own full humanity. And whether as one is a Mother Teresa who goes into the ghettos of Calcutta, whether one is a man or woman who gives his life to free slaves, whether it is a, a man like the da Dalai Lama or Mahatma Gandhi who pledges the beauty of the human being, whether it is Abraham who says, I will sacrifice my son because of my belief in God, or Jesus Christ, who gives his life because he belongs to the Father. And such, such ownership, such belonging is of the power that it draws all persons to himself. Be sure that's what you believe. For in that companionship and in that obedience, these years you have spent here will not be in vain, not because of the data you have, not even because of the wonderful friendships you've made, but because you have a matrix for understanding what trust is. And you will trust on the worth of your own person. And you will give yourself in fidelity to the one who is worthy of you. And you will find your freedom in the loving service and dedication to one's fellow human being, that our human race might flourish, and that the image of God in which we have been created might be glorified in love. We stand as a people of faith, and so together let us profess our faith as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the community of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence that the shepherd hears us, we confidently raise our prayers and our petitions. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. needs of the church. We pray that the word of God, which has spread to every nation, race, and people, may be a spring of living water for those who serve God with gladness. Let us pray to the Lord. For public authorities, that they may serve and speak boldly in lifting up the vulnerable and the outcast among us. Let us pray to the Lord. For the people of Ukraine, we pray that peace may be attained for the country, that healing may comfort and mend the brokenness brought on by violence. We pray that all may hear the shepherd's voice amidst the chaos of war. Let us pray to the Lord. For all mothers, expectant mothers, and religious sisters who act as spiritual mothers, we pray that God guide their lives with tenderness and providence. On this weekend, we pray for those who may have difficulty celebrating Mother's Day. May God wipe away tears from their eyes and may they find peace. Let us pray to the Lord. the Gonzaga University class of 2022. We pray that they are filled with the gifts of wisdom and understanding. May their studies inspire them to live their lives for the greater glory of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For the dead, we pray for the repose of the souls of our students, alumni, faculty, and staff of Gonzaga University. In a special way, we remember Archbis Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Honorary Gonzaga Class of 2012, and Justice Mary Fairhurst, Class of 1979. May all who have gone before us be admitted into the peace of Christ's kingdom. May all who mourn their loss be embraced by the love of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear the prayers we bring to you this day. We know your voice and strive to be attentive to it, living lives in intimate union with you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, <coughs> your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Thank you. 
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O oh Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat from it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death. We proclaim your death.
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of, of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his sec second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may attain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the mo most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Aloysius Gonzaga, St. Ignatius Loyola, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be confirmed, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by Jesus' teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let's offer each other some sign of peace. The risen Lord be with you. Peace be with you, Pat. Thank you. Peace, Mike. Peace, 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 peace. John, peace of Christ, great job. Thank you.
Behold, sisters and brothers, the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word and my soul shall be filled.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures. Keep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. I would like to now invite Dr. Thane McCullough, the president of Gonzaga University, to give us his remarks. As we move into evening on this beautiful Saturday, my remarks are ones of gratitude. Gratitude, first of all, for our Office of Mission and Ministry, which is under the wonderful leadership of Dr. Luke Lavin and Ms. Lauren Hackman Brooks. And in a particular way, the Senior Coordinator for Liturgical Life, Mr. Daniel Danka, who together with the Student Committee for the Commencement Mass, which is made up of members of the class of 2022, together with all of the liturgical ministers, and in particular, our ministers of music, have done such a wonderful job of helping us come together this afternoon to celebrate would you please join me in thanking all of them? Our university as a Jesuit work, an apostolic work of the society is, is in communion with an amazing community of Jesuits who live and serve not only Gonzaga, but all of the affiliated works of our region. And I am very grateful today for the leadership and the support of our presider, who, as was previously said, is the rector of the Della Strada Jesuit community and the pastor of St. Aloysius Parish Church. Please join me in thanking Father Tom Lamana for his leadership.
And I want to thank as well Father John Murphy for his homily today. Thank you. And indeed, it is, it is a rare opportunity during the course of the year uh, to see our community of Jesuits and other concelebrants come together uh, for such an important occasion. But please join me in thanking the entire Jesuit community and all of our concelebrants today. For those of you who entered as first-year students, you may have remembered uh, years and years ago now, probably seems like 15 or 20, orientation weekend and welcome mass. Welcome mass is an important moment of beginning and today's mass is an important moment of concluding. And for those of you who will Take your degrees tomorrow. We're almost there, but not quite. This is really fitting and an appropriate moment for us to gather as community, graduates, family members, friends, loved ones, to express our gratitude to God for God's presence in our community and for God's companionship along the journey. A journey that has been singular and in many ways challenging these last years. We recognize today that in many ways the Holy Spirit has been with us throughout this entire journey, has accompanied us, and helped us to understand God's will for us during this time. And we call it commencement because in many ways it's an ending and a beginning. And so today is also an opportunity to ask for God's continued blessings upon each of our graduates, their families and supporters. And as we heard today in the readings, the readings of the Good Shepherd, we are being led and we are being called. And in that call, we put our trust and our faith in the Lord as we continue on journeys and paths that lie before us. We remember this that just as we are connected to one another, we too remain connected to God. And surely, we will be blessed on that journey. I'd like to ask my colleague, Dr. Michelle Wheatley, to join me here so that we might together offer a prayer over our graduates. Before I do so, though, as some of you may be aware, Dr. Wheatley is herself an alum of Gonzaga and has spent the past 19 years as a part of this community. This spring, she shared with us that she is going to embark on a new journey come summer. And I simply want to take this opportunity to express before this communion, my gratitude to Dr. Wheatley for her leadership, her service, her support of so many within this community, students, faculty, staff, family members, alums, who across time have been blessed by her companionship, her talents, and her love for our mission and this work. Would you please join with me in thanking Dr. Michelle Wheatley for her years of service. I would now ask our graduates to please stand while the rest remain seated and please bow your heads so we can offer a blessing over you. 
As you leave our university, may God bless and guide you on your way. May you thrive in the love that your family and friends have for you. May you flourish in the delight and confidence your professors have in you. May you continue to grow in wisdom, compassion, and your search for justice. May you open your heart to the world. May God make you uncomfortable with easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships. May disruptions in life give you pause to look for God's invitation to something richer, something more. May you open your heart to the world. May God bless you with outrage over violence, starvation, poverty, May the one who created your feet help you to move them toward justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. May you open your heart to the world. May God inspire you with confidence to know that you can make a difference, that you can do what others claim is impossible. May you expect the unexpected, Anticipate miracles. Know that with God, all things are possible. May you open your heart to the world. graduates forth into new chapters and new adventures, we mission you to share generously all that you have learned and experienced here as you open your heart to the world. And may Almighty God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to completion. We ask this through Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, may the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace and joy. Alleluia, alleluia.